What's the most powerful curse technique in Jujutsu Kaisen? That is the question we are trying to answer today and it's not simple. There is so much to take into account and there are so many techniques to consider, but I've whittled it down to just 20 of them that I would consider the upper echelon of techniques and then ordered them to the best of my abilities using these qualifications. Because these abilities are all so good, I've also divided them into tiers. And we will be starting in the B tier. So let's get started at 20 with the Limitless Technique. This might come as a surprise to some of you, but it makes sense when we look at the full context of the Limitless Technique. This technique allows the user to manipulate cursed energy at an atomic level, allowing them to push, pull, and slow down anything they want. It also allows them to teleport and destroy matter with hollow purple, but it requires a huge amount of cursed energy to use and an even higher degree of precision. This level of cursed energy and precision is not normally attainable by average sorcerers or even above average sorcerers. Only those with the six eyes can make full use of the Limitless Technique. And since we are grading individual techniques, we are looking at the Limitless Technique without the six eyes. It's heavily implied that without the six eyes, Limitless is pretty limited, and that its users cannot make use of the full potential of the technique, which is why it's down here at 20. If we were including the six eyes, it would be a top two ability without a doubt. At 19, we have Boogie Woogie. Boogie Woogie is a weird one. It allows the user to switch any two objects with cursed energy if they are in the user's immediate area. This can be cursed tools, cursed spirits, sorcerers, and even objects infused with cursed energy like rocks. This ability is best used in conjunction with another sorcerer as it allows the two of them to work synergistically, and having more options to switch with in general increases the complexity of this technique. It was this technique that allowed Toto and Yuji to push Hanami into a corner and beat Mahito during the Shibuya incident. It is among the most flexible and easy to use techniques in this series, but there is one major issue. It offers zero offensive power. This means the success and usefulness of the technique is 100% dependent on the user's intellect and creative thinking capabilities, meaning it is a worse technique for worse sorcerers, whereas a lot of the techniques we're talking about today are good regardless of who is using them. At 18, we have Contractual Recreation. This is an interesting technique. It essentially allows the user to summon any inanimate object that they have a receipt for. This can be anything from knives to houses to, well, anything. These objects can be given properties from the user as well in order to make them behave differently than usual. It's basically a worse version of Curse Spirit Manipulation. While Contractual recreation does have some flexibility, its effectiveness is largely dependent on the receipts that the user buys and the user's battle intelligence. A sorcerer with less creative thinking is going to make much worse use of the technique than someone that can think outside of the box. On top of this, the technique does not offer a lot in terms of raw power when compared to a lot of the abilities on this list. Realistically, the most powerful things that can be bought are houses because of their weight or some kind of modern weapon that can be modified with cursed energy. This brings up another issue with the technique, which is that it is also dependent on the user's resources. A normal person is going to have a much harder time making this ability effective than, say, the CEO of Raytheon or Lockheed Martin. Most people will not have access to the things that make this ability broken. Oh, and the user also has to carry the receipt on them in order to use it, so there is another limitation. That being said, in the right hands, it is still a pretty powerful technique, as it did let Reggie start almost beat Megumi in his domain. Reggie was likely on the higher end of contractual recreation users, so we're going to lower the technique score by a small amount, which is how we got this placing. 17 is Mythic Beast Amber, the ability that Kashimo has. This ability is pretty overpowered. It essentially lets the user control all aspects of electricity. They can charge their body with electricity to surpass their physical limits, vaporize irradiated objects, launch electricity from their body, and more. When it comes to pure power and versatility, it is a top tier ability, but it can only be used one time, as the user's body will crumble after one use since the ability surpasses passes the limits of mankind. This one-time use stipulation is the main reason the ability is down here. It's a huge drawback that basically makes the technique unusable, except in the most desperate of circumstances. But when circumstances do get desperate, this ability really gets to shine. Or at least it should. From here we move into the A tier. These are abilities that are either amazing with some minor drawbacks, or abilities that are good and have no drawbacks. The first ability in this tier at 16 is Jacob's Ladder, also known as Technique Extinguishment. This ability nullifies any and all cursed techniques it interacts with. That can include cursed techniques on cursed objects, barriers, and more. When you first hear this technique, it sounds kind of broken. It can disable infinity, stop a black hole, and prevent the cut that slashes the world from hitting. It might just be the best defensive ability in the series, but it also kind of sucks. See, this ability means that the user also cannot use a cursed tool or give themselves any advantages from Jujutsu. This means it at best levels the playing field between the user and their opponent.
opponent, making the battle a hand-to-hand -hand combat showdown. And compared to some of the other abilities on this list, that's just not really that good. There are a lot of sorcerers that are exceptional at hand-to-hand -hand combat, so you have to be in the very, very upper echelon of hand-to-hand -hand combat fighters in order to actually make this technique useful. Sure, it might be the only way to kill Sukuna, but that won't be applicable in 99.9% .9 of circumstances. At 15, we have Water Manipulation. This one is kind of hard to rank. We only saw it in use once, and from what little evidence we have, it seems kind of powerful, but not that powerful. Water in general is a very powerful force. Change in pressure has resulted in the deaths of hundreds of underwater workers because water is just so heavy. We see this in the fight against Dagon when multiple strong sorcerers are immobilized by his water, which is quite a feat when you consider how strong a grade 1 sorcerer is supposed to be. However, this technique is basically useless against the fastest tier of sorcerers since Nobito had no trouble outspeeding it. Water manipulation also likely allows the user to summon Shikigami, but we only saw Dagon do this in his domain, so we don't know if it's actually possible to do this in a normal atmosphere. Because of these unknowns and the lackluster showing that we saw, I can't really put this technique any higher. At 14 is Projection Sorcery. Projection Sorcery basically lets the user move on a set path at 24 frames per second. This allows the user to move extremely fast, and anything they touch must abide by the same frame per second rule or they will be frozen in a frame of animation for one second. This ability allowed Nobito to become the second fastest sorcerer in the modern era behind only Gojo, and we see him expertly apply this ability in Shibuya. Really, there's no drawback for this ability as long as you use it properly. The main reason it's this low is that it just gets outscaled by the abilities above it. At 13 is Plant Manipulation. The main advantage of Plant Manipulation is that there is a lot you can do with it. It can manifest as roots, which have a wide variety of uses, or it can manifest as cursed buds, which feed off the cursed energy of opponents. It can even create wooden balls that shoot at opponents and this flower thing that distracts opponents. This means Plant Manipulation is one of the few techniques that has a full kit of abilities for offense, defense, and support. On top of all this, anything manifested by the user can be spawned and despawned at will, which adds another layer of complexity. The only downside to this technique is once you figure out all of the pieces, it's not that strong. I mean, if Toto and Yuji could force the cursed spirit using this technique into a corner, it definitely lacks some strength. Don't get me wrong, it's not outright weak, but it does kind of lack in the raw power department when compared to its peers. However, our next technique does not lack in that department because it's the construction technique. If you've only watched the anime for Jujutsu Kaisen, seeing construction on this list in general is probably a surprise, but it makes sense if you're a manga reader. Much later in the manga, we are introduced to the character Yozuru who makes use of the construction technique, and she showcases just how strong this technique can be. By taking inspiration from the energy efficiency of insects, Yozuru can increase the efficiency of the cursed energy used for construction, which in turn allowed her to use the ability much more versatilely than Mai could. She created an exoskeleton to increase her defense, liquid metal for a flexible long-range offensive option, and perfect spear which is an ability that can destroy anything it touches in theory, but I don't think it's as strong as we think. See, in this fight, Mahuraga adapts to perfect spear in one rotation, but it's later explained that stronger and more complex techniques take more rotations for the Shikigami to adapt to. This implies that perfect spear is not as strong as it seems. Regardless, construction is still a strong technique, as long as the user wants to be strong. If a user doesn't have the drive for strength that Yozuru did, then they will not reach the heights of the technique that she did. This is the main reason the ability is not higher up, because from this point on, we're going to talk about abilities that are good without condition. At 11, we have one of the coolest abilities in Jujutsu Kaisen. It's Ice Formation. As the name implies, this ability allows the user to create and control ice. This can be in the form of a mist that freezes multiple opponents, ice spears that can be used to impale opponents, and giant floating ice blocks. Ice in general is a dangerous technique because it can cause serious damage to the skin and it makes things more brittle and breakable. This technique can also be controlled to a very high degree, allowing the user to target specific opponents more than others and omit certain opponents if they want to. It is an incredibly powerful and flexible technique, which is why it is at the high end of A tier. Really, there's no drawbacks to it, there are just a few techniques that are better overall. At 10, we have Deadly Sentencing. Deadly Sentencing is one of two domain-based techniques. These are techniques that revolve around non-lethal domains in order to create favorable conditions for the drawer of the domain. In this case, Deadly Sentencing makes the user and their opponent enter a court case for some crimes the opponent has committed. If they are found guilty, confiscation will come into play which will remove their cursed technique. And if they are found guilty of killing someone, the user of the technique gains access to the executioner's sword, which can kill any opponent in one hit 
unconditionally. This sounds like a huge advantage and on the surface it is, but you have to understand that finding someone guilty of murder is not easy. Many people can claim self-defense if they've murdered any battle of jujutsu. There's also a set of dates in Japan where the death penalty cannot be given as a sentence. This is all to say that while the executioner's sword is extremely powerful, it's not an easy ability to get access to. Even just confiscation is quite powerful on its own though as many sorcerers rely on their curse techniques for everything. Even though this technique does have some small issues, its strengths definitely outweigh its weaknesses by a large margin, which is why it's at number 10 on this list. Next we have the final A tier ability before we get into the S tier. At 9, we have Fire Manipulation. Fire Manipulation is kind of crazy. It has a wide variety of super destructive applications, the most basic of which is shooting fire out of the user's hands, but they can also summon exploding insects, mini volcanoes, lava in general, oh, and meteors the size of city blocks. These meteors act as the maximum technique and even Sukuna admitted that the technique would do damage to him if it hit, which means it must be pretty strong. The versatility of this ability and the deadliness of flames makes this an easy contender for the best ability in A tier, but there is a pretty sizable gap between A tier and S tier. While A tier abilities are really strong, S tier abilities are reality bending. Like these abilities are seriously and disgustingly strong. But before we get into them, please consider subscribing. Over 90% of my viewers are not subscribed and it would really mean a lot to me if we could fix that. You are obviously enjoying the content, so why not? Please consider it and let's get started with the S tier at number 9, which is Star Rage. Despite being the weakest S tier technique, Star Rage is broken. It lets the user apply virtual mass to themselves, allowing their hits to be way more destructive than normal. A great example of this is when Yuki punched through Kenjaku's arms. To give you a frame of reference, it would take 45,000 PSI to punch through the human body if the human was moving at the speed of a bullet, meaning it would take far more than that for a human, even a special grade, to punch through an arm like Yuki did. And Yuki didn't just punch through Kenjaku's arms. She sent him flying so far and so fast that it broke Tengen's barrier pattern. Like when speedrunners move so fast they go out of bounds in a video game because the game cannot keep up with its loading. In terms of raw power output, there are very few techniques that come close to Star Rage. And if this raw power wasn't enough, the mass from this technique can also be applied to the Shikigami Garuda, which gives it a lot of flexibility since Garuda can be used as a restraint or as a ball to be kicked or even a whip. And if that wasn't enough, Star Rage has no limit on the amount of mass that can be added to the user, meaning that if they get desperate they can create a black hole, sacrificing themselves in the process, which would probably kill anything that is subject to it. Well, almost anything. So what could possibly be stronger than a technique like this? Well, what about one that can ignore all of that? One that can alter reality at the will of the user? Well, that's what's next at 7 because it's Comedian. It might come as a surprise to you to see Comedian this low because it is a broken ability, but I will explain why in just a second. First we have to explain why Comedian is up here in the first place. When Comedian is active, anything the user thinks is funny will happen. If the user thinks it's funny to fight in the middle of the ocean, they will. If they think it would be funny for a thousand elephants to stampede where the user and their opponent is fighting, they will. If they think it would be funny to bypass infinity, they will. This ability can be the most broken ability in Jujutsu Kaisen depending on how it is used, but it does have two limitations. First of all, the user must have confidence that they are being funny for it to work. So if they are not confident they will not be able to alter reality. And second, the ability cannot be used to outright kill people. This seems like a pretty big drawback, but even with this restriction, it's still super strong. I mean, it's one of like three abilities that can get through infinity. And when we saw Takeba use it, it seemed to make him extremely durable, which is also a huge positive. If this ability had no drawbacks, it would 100% be a top 2 or even top 1 ability. But it does have some restrictions, which is why it's on the lower end of S tier rather than the high end. If only there was an ability that could make the user invincible while also letting them kill their opponent. Oh wait, there is. It's number 6, Idle Death Gambit. This is another domain-based ability like Deadly Sentencing. In this one, after activating the domain and meeting a condition, the user rolls a slot machine and if they get a jackpot, they get unlimited cursed energy for 4 minutes and 11 seconds. During this time, they are essentially unkillable and have better reverse curse technique than even the likes of Gojo and Sukuna. This allows the user to heal as they break and fight without worrying about expending cursed energy. And because the unlimited cursed energy period lasts so long, 
long, the user can just cast the domain again as soon as the time period is up. This ability allowed Hikari to keep up with two different borderline special grade sorcerers. The only issue with the technique is the condition to hit a jackpot, which is a 1 in 239 roll. But the user can just preject the technique and get unlimited cursed energy before entering the fight, so it has a fairly easy workaround. If I were to include an SS tier or S plus tier, this is where it would begin. The top 5 abilities in Jujutsu Kaisen put every lower S tier to shame in pretty much every sense. At this point, the competition is extremely tight, so determining a specific rank is hard. Regardless, at 5, we have the 10 Shadows technique. I have talked about the 10 Shadows a lot on this channel, so I'm going to keep it brief. The 10 Shadows are broken, more specifically the shadows themselves and of course Maharaga. The shadows and the ten shadows can be used as a liquid and for transportation of people and cursed weapons. This gives the user a high level of versatility and movement from their technique which is not very common. Maharaga has the ability to adapt to any and all phenomena, including domain expansions. This makes the Shikigami one of the strongest entities in Jujutsu Kaisen, but there is a catch. No ten shadows user in the history of ten shadows users has ever tamed Maharaga. This essentially means that the Shikigami is unusable, and some could even say that it shouldn't be taken into account when scaling the technique because of that. I don't agree with this sentiment, as Maharaga can be used in a last ditch effort without it being tamed. It's still a very strong technique without Maharaga, and it is among the most versatile in the show, so it is still undoubtedly a solid S tier tech. At 4th we have another very versatile technique. Idol Transfiguration. This technique essentially allows the alteration of the human soul in pretty much every way, which in turn lets the user alter the human body in any way that they want. They can kill them instantly, turn them into transfigured humans to use as a pawn, and even activate curse techniques within people that don't usually have them. This makes the curse technique extremely effective against humans, since it can kill a lot of opponents in just one touch. But stronger sorcerers do take more touches, so it's not omnipotent. The only issue with this technique is that it's likely useless against cursed spirits, since they don't have a soul in the same way humans do. This means the user will have a limited range of options when fighting curses, which is a pretty big part of Jujutsu, but they can still alter their own body so it's not a huge deal, which is why it's up here at 4th. At 3rd, we have another super versatile technique. Seeing a trend? It's Curse Manipulation. This technique is like the Ten Shadows technique, but a little bit better. As the name implies, it allows the user to manipulate cursed spirits into doing their bidding. This gives the user a high amount of versatility as they can pretty much summon any curse they need, as long as they have it under their control. This means a strong curse manipulation user could control some of the strongest entities in the show, like Mahito, Jogo, and Curse Noya. Being able to exercise the curse spirit is a big condition, but I don't think it's a huge restriction because the user can just spam weaker curses and reinforce them with cursed energy to make the curses stronger. Curse spirit manipulation also has a maximum technique in Uzumaki, which creates a high energy blast of cursed energy and absorbs the techniques of stronger sorcerers for a one-time use. This gives the user even more flexibility and even more power, which is why this technique is up here. We've talked about a lot of versatile curse techniques today, but we still haven't covered the most versatile technique, because it's here at number 2, and it's copy. The copy technique allows the user to copy curse techniques with very little conditions. This means any of the curse techniques we've talked about before are subject to this technique with the exception of Limitless. Maharaga, Idle Transfiguration, Star Rage, and more can be used in quick succession by a person who has copied and met their conditions. And as far as we can tell, there is no limitation to how fast or how often the user can switch techniques. The only real drawback to this technique is that it can only be used for 5 minutes at a time, but considering how much can be done within those 5 minutes, most fights probably won't last that long. So what could possibly be better than an ability that can be any ability? Well, it's Shrine, Sukuna's Technique. If you haven't read the manga, this might be surprising to you. While it is a strong technique, it's nothing reality bending or too over the top. In fact, it can't even get past infinity, right? Well, it can. Recently, Shrine got an upgrade known as the Slash that cuts the world, which allows Cleave to cut through the space a target is in rather than the target itself. This means Cleave, an invisible slash, can cut through any target without fail regardless of the technique they have active or their cursed energy reinforcement. It is essentially an ability that can kill anyone without fail, making it the most powerful ability in the show without a doubt. It is implied that the slash comes with some sort of condition, but considering how Sukuno is able to fulfill this condition without Gojo noticing, I don't think it's all that severe. With this slash, it doesn't matter which technique you have copied or which cursed spirits you have in your arsenal or what shape your soul is. When it hits you, you're dead, which is why it's number one. And that's the list. If you enjoyed this video, I implore you to join the community discord in the description down below. And while you're down there, why don't you just go ahead and subscribe as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next week.